Here we will discuss electric rays. Electric rays are chondroichthys. This means they do not have bones, but instead have a skeleton which is composed mostly of hyaline cartilage. They are more distantly related to sharks, but more closely related to rays, which commonly include stingrays and the larger manta rays. This is Torpedo marmorata, also called the marbled electric ray. This is Narcine bancrofti, or the lesser electric ray. Some electric rays, such as Diplobatus ammata, have what appears to be a dorsal bullseye, ergo the name bullseye electric ray. Most electric rays, like stingrays and manta rays, are generally friendly toward humans and only attack when feeling threatened. This brings up the question, how do they attack? Lacking sharp teeth and powerful jaws like their cousin, the shark, they instead live up to their name and can generate upwards of 200 volts of electricity. The electric ray may be the most electrosensitive of all animals. Because their eyes are on top of their heads, they have extremely poor vision, which must be compensated for with the use of other senses, including detection of electricity. Many species of rays and skates outside the family, such as stingrays, have electric organs in their tail. In contrast, electric rays possess two large electric organs on each side of its head, where current passes from the lower ventral side to the upper dorsal surface of the body. Electric organs are controlled by four central nerves from each side of a specialized part of the brain called its electric lobe. Primary nerves from the electric lobe branch repeatedly and then attach to the lower side of each plate of batteries, shown here. These batteries are composed of hexagonal columns in a honeycomb formation, with each column consisting of 140 to half a million gelatinous plates. These plates are composed of cells called electrocytes, the functional units of electricity generation. In marine fish, these batteries are connected as a parallel circuit where freshwater batteries are only found in series, which can transmit discharges of higher voltage. This is necessary in freshwater because freshwater cannot conduct electricity as well as saltwater can due to its significantly lower ionic strength. Generation of electricity by electric rays occurs in two different phases. The first phase is called charging the electrocyte. Here are two electrocytes shown here on the left side of the screen. You notice at rest, the outside of each of these cells is positively charged mainly, while the inside of the cell is negative. This is accomplished through what is called the sodium-potassium pump or sodium-potassium ATPase. This is an enzyme identical, for the most part, to what is found in human neurons and muscle cells. Through the action of the sodium-potassium ATPase, Sodium is moved out of the cell, while potassium is moved into the cell with the help of adenosine triphosphate hydrolysis. This creates an activated state for all of the electrocytes in the column battery, with positive charges heavily outside the cell and negative charges inside the cell. The second phase is called discharging the electrocyte. These are the same two electrocytes that we saw in the previous picture. Each of these electrocytes is innervated by neurons which are acetylcholinergic in nature. This means that when activated, they release acetylcholine to the electrocyte, activating the electrocyte. These acetylcholinergic neurons stem from a pacemaker nucleus, which can be activated either when the electric ray senses danger or the presence of prey. In either case, the pacemaker nucleus becomes activated, in turn activating these acetylcholinergic neurons, prompting them to release acetylcholine. Acetylcholine will bind to receptors on the electrocyte's membrane. This causes electrocyte discharge, in which sodium ions that were once outside the smooth surface of the electrocyte rush into the cell with their concentration gradient. This carries a positive current through the electrocytes as shown right here, leading to the generation of massive amounts of electricity. With such a battery, an average electric ray may electrocute larger prey with a current of up to 30 amperes and a voltage ranging between 50 and 200 volts. To put that in perspective, imagine dropping a live hair dryer producing between 120 and 220 volts into a bathtub. This is generally enough to kill a human.
Overall, these are amazing creatures. Just try not to upset them.